Eamon O'Carroll, your thoughts on Bradford's first competitive outing in the 1895 Cup this afternoon? Yeah, obviously very happy. Um, you know, it's, it's been a real tough week for the boys, so I'm, I'm really happy how they responded. We had, you know, lost a couple of players today. You can see from the from the starting team, but we just pulled together and um, I'm really happy, especially with our first half performance. You mentioned illness. Is that what Dan Smith and Michael Lawrence missed out with? Yeah, and we also have Ben Blackmore. who was he was 50-50, but put his hand up to play and we ended up losing him anyway. But yeah, it's, you know, I think there was still a couple under the weather when they got on the. The bus, but I just tried to not, not to listen to too much of it and ignore it. But you know, a, a great effort from the lads, and I'm really proud of them. You must be pleased, especially with that first half, six tries. You only conceded the one, a real strong performance. Yeah, yeah, it was, and it was from what we what we highlighted, where we wanted to where we wanted to be good. Uh, so that was one of probably the most most pleasing things. I think we we kind of stayed on track and stayed on course and, and got the reward for it. Probably not so much in the second half. Obviously, six different try scores as well in that first half. A real team team effort. That must be good for that sort of connectivity that you look for. Yeah, definitely. I, I, you know, I'm I'm more pleased, honestly, about our defensive efforts. You know, I think you know, I don't know what the possession was now, but we you know we had to do a fair bit of defending, but we kept turning up for each other and we looked really controlled. So um, that that for me is the most pleasing thing. Um, and I, and I said that to the group in there. You know, I thought our defensive effort was was really good, and it's going to have to be in this competition. It's tough. Is that the Big takeaway for you, Eamon, that, that defence, second half, you see Lewis Carr here in a way, Aidan McGowan, Kieran Gill wrap him up, Perry Whitley bundled into touch. Yeah, I think the, the one on Perry Whitley there was, was outstanding from, from the group, so yeah, th those things will be making our, our, our video review before before anything, so I'm, you know, I'm, I, I am actually really, really proud of the boys for the, those kind of efforts and it's important we highlight that as well. You lost a couple of players to injury. Ben Blackmore early in that first half. What, what's up with Ben? Yeah, l uh, lower limb injury, so we don't know the extent of that yet. Um, you know, he's, he's up in the change rooms and you know he's got he's got ice on it. I think he'll be he'll leave on crutches. So and Evan Skur as well. He's he's done his knee there, so it's it's been a costly day for us. But we're not sure of the severity just yet. Ariba Doro looked to be limping on the touchline at the end. Is, is there anything wrong with Ariba? Yeah, he's been struggling, mate. He was he was fifty fifty today. Um, and fair play to Ariba. He put his hand up. He, he just said, give me the, the warm-up to try and get through it, and he did. He missed our last training session. Uh, I thought he was outstanding again, and probably you know, put his hand up there for man of the match. Obviously, potentially down on numbers. Is it too early to say how long these players could be out for? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm optimistic, hopefully they'll, they'll be fine, but if they're not, we'll, we'll do what we need to do. We've got some depth and you know, we've got some, some lads to, to come back, but hopefully they're, they're not going to be missing for too long. Obviously, losing so many players to injury, that allowed the 18th man to come on, Elliot Paposha. Yeah, I thought he did great. We just just mentioned it, and it must be really tough for a young lad. You know, he wasn't even in the. You know, he wasn't looking like he was going to be even in the squad at the beginning of the week, and then obviously, you know, a reference we lost a couple of people. He got a touch closer, and I ended up messaging him just like last night, saying, "Look, mate, just just be ready." His response was, "I'm always ready." So um, that was good. He's been great for us, and yeah, obviously he got his opportunity to play, and I thought, you know, some of his efforts were, were really good. Some of his actions were good. He carried the ball with some vigour, and he defended when he needed to without probably having the most perfect preparation. But you know, that's a a big rap for him. We saw a couple of times Bradford struggling to deal with the Jewsbury Jube restarts. The, the, <laughs> the, the, <laughs> the facts that we can hear the wind, Eamon, is that is that is that mitigation on those? Yeah, yeah, it is. I think uh, the lads did the best. Uh, it was, yeah, it weren't great, was it? But um, my, the pleasing thing for me was, yeah, we, we lost the ball on those occasions, but we uh, we backed it up with some tremendous defence and some great effort there to to go and not concede. So that that's the most pleasing thing for me. Although. I won't say that too much. Hopefully, we'll we'll, we'll complete our kickoff sets next week. Is that something you, you're going to obviously question that high error count? And I think there was quite a number of penalties as well thrown in. More, more so the penalties. I think you have to take into consideration the the nature of the the errors that were made with those kickoffs. I think you'll only appreciate it if you if you was here. Um, so we won't get too bogged down on that. My main message will be highlighting those effort areas. You know when the dead set going in in the corner and it didn't really matter. We were up by four to and people are sprinting in to, to make that effort. That That's what we want to be about. That, those are the things that I'll highlight. Obviously, we don't want to be making as many errors as we did. And we have to learn because we won't always be able to, to back it up with our defence the way we did today. But, so that's got to be a learning curve for us straight away. But I'm just immensely proud of the boys for their efforts, how they kept turning up for each other. With what they went through during the week as well. Not an excuse, but 
they certainly attacked it today and you know, I'm really proud to be the coach. When compared to the first half, Eamon, mean, obviously Dewsbury much improved second half, only the two tries scored and as you said you've had to do a mountain of defensive work. Yeah, yeah we did and that, you know we, we said, we, we spoke about the start of the game them wanting to respond off the back of their last game and then again at half time and when which they did, they put us under pressure and they, they really tested us so, but again I look at my group and go well well done for being able to, to handle that and probably turn some pressure back onto them as well. Billy Jowett when we spoke you said that he's back in was under investigation what's the latest with Billy Jowett? He's just been dancing in the changing room so I think he's alright but <laughs> no I, I don't know if I'm honest with you we, we've kind of kept him away from training just to, to let his back ease up um, so I'll probably have a good chat with him now and just see where he's at but we'll do the right thing by Billy and make sure we don't we don't rush him back but positive to see him here at the game today. And just finally from me I mean, inevitably in a game of, uh, in a rugby league injuries are going to bite it does look the horizon looking forward looks like you might be doing it a bit tough now. Oh, I don't know. I think it is part and parcel. Obviously, losing two today, the way we did, and we lost a couple in uh, in training. That's not great. But we'll, um, you know, sometimes those things happen. All the way our luck will turn, and uh, and we'll be all right. We'll get some bodies back next week. Cheers, Evan. Yeah, Evan. Just from me. Uh, with that second half, how, how tricky is it? Obviously, in a first, you, you've basically won the game at half time. Out when you go in that changing room, what's that talk like when you're playing so well? Jews be aren't really going to come back. Getting those lads out and trying to sort of go again 40 minutes when you've played so well already, it's almost game over. Well, I just think it's important that we we remain to our high standards that we want, that we want to do. We want to make sure that we get something out of that game, regardless if you go on and win it. You can all sometimes go into the changing rooms at the end of the game feeling like you know that's you've really let yourselves down. So mm. that's something that we didn't do today. I was I was really happy. We could have been a little bit more clinical with yeah. the ball, but. I thought in terms of our defence, we won collision and we worked hard for each other. So those are the most pleasing things and those are the things that we spoke about at half-time, just making sure we got our effort areas right and we valued the little things that had put us in a good position in, in the first half. Mick briefly mentioned Aidan there. I thought Aidan was absolutely outstanding in tack and defence all game. Obviously, he's still only a young lad and he's very slight, but I tell you what, he could tackle lads twice as big as him. With Aidan, how, how far can that kid go? He seems like a really special talent. Oh, he's a, he's a Super League player without doubt. Uh, got, Huge respect for him. He works tremendously hard on his game. You know, he's fully invested. He's come here with a great attitude, and um, no, he's definitely going to be a Super League player for a long time to come. He's a, he's a credit to Huddersfield. That's good to hear. And obviously, I thought on the other end of the edge, I thought John Davis really left from the front today. How important was he, given that you lost so? I mean, you've got an experienced this team anyway in parts, but with losing Michael and Dan, how, how big was John today? Just people like him, like with that experience. He lost a couple of big names, and obviously John sort of really set up and seemed to really lead the team through today at times. Yeah, he did, and you know he, he, he speaks about it. that. That's his job to do that. I think he, he plays that role for us anyway, regardless of who's playing. He just he did it really well today. I thought I thought he had some some good touches, and you know led by example. In that second half, obviously George got a bit of a soft yellow for a bit of a scuffle. Sam got a bit touchy at times. Both of those two play with their heart on the sleeve. They always have, and it makes them the players they are. But is there a just saying? When the game when the game's a bit tense, a bit touchy, just to sort of keep it on a on a level, if you like. Yeah, I don't know with that one because I think they were more responding on and seeing one of the mates hurt yeah. in a in a, in a tackle. Yeah, so yeah. you know you don't want to take that hmm. emotional factor out of the game. And obviously there's a line and they didn't overstep the mark with that. So I'm okay. And um, with um, with I uh, put on my Sherlock Holmes pants before the game and saw Michael and Dan with this. And Michael tells me he put his back up a bit in training, so that might. Be, but with Michael, Dan, Billy, etc. We know Evan and Ben still need assessment. With those three, Michael, Dan and uh, Billy, you're hoping they're all quite short-term issues with illness or back problems or whatever. Yeah, yeah, that's all. They'll, they'll be assessed tomorrow and we'll, we'll see where they're at, but they're, they're looking positive to, to feature next week. That's good to hear. And obviously with, um, with the 895, I will chat to you before the Challenge Cup game next week for about that, but with the 895, is it quite exciting that effectively you've got to last 16 game against Keith? Now that must make it quite exciting that it's interesting to win it takes all at Cooper Park in a couple of weeks. Yeah, it is. We've just spoke about our next job is the, the Challenge Cup game, which is going to be really tough, and then we'll, we'll look at the, the Keith the game after that. But um, we, we spoke as a group about this month and, and realising that we're in two different competitions and, and what we want to get out of them but we'll assess them one game at a time. I know you're quite pleased that you've got a lot of competitive, in a way you, like now it's competitive games it's quite exciting, yes it's still a while till the league starts but it's all these it's two cup competitions you can really get into it competitors with a big game at Wakey in the middle of next month. Yeah yeah that's it and uh, again just you know, like I said before, it's about attacking each game as it comes. Today, I had a different feel about it. When you wake up in the morning and you, you know, you you're getting ready for a game, this did have a different feel to it to what Leeds did last week. So, you no, know, I'm I'm glad that these games are around now. Um, but like I said, I, I just want to congratulate my team on 
what's been a great week, a tough week for them, but an outstanding performance. Was that just because that illness kind of was through the camp when he said a tough week for them, etc.? Yeah, yeah, Ill illness, um, you know, change to training, you know, quite low, light notice. Um, lads dropping out, then Aribi obviously not training on our last yeah. session, so today was always going to be about digging in for each other and, and working hard, and, and they did that.